Coming up tonight in the cruise view, the Quantum gets a warm welcome in San Juan. We take a look at some of the bars around the ship and we talk with the person responsible for them. It's all coming up, so let's set sail. <laughs> Welcome to day 12 of the cruise views, sailing on board the Quantum of the Seas, the fourth day of the second itinerary. And today was our first port of call on this itinerary. We arrived at San Juan, Puerto Rico at 4 p.m. this afternoon. Right ahead of us, as I've been mentioning the past several days, was the Norwegian Gem. She got there an hour before we did. And Puerto Rico gave us a great welcome into their island for the very first time with the Quantum of the Seas. We passed the fort at about 3 p.m. this afternoon. And already we had at least one airplane and three helicopters swirling around us and they continued to swirl around us all the way until we were docked. and along the coastline with the bay were just tons of people watching the Quantum of the Seas make her first ever arrival to the area. And those crowds did not dissipate at all as the day went on and night fell. The crowds right along the street at the entrance of the pier continued to grow, all just to get one little glimpse of this brand new ship that had arrived for the first time. So we didn't see crowds like this when she arrived in New York for the first time, but Puerto Rico has definitely gone all out. You could feel the excitement. I know I had a couple tweets online about arriving in Puerto Rico on the Quantum of the Season got multiple replies back from people in Puerto Rico welcoming us. So it was really a warm welcome both on land and on the internet for the Quantum of the Sea. It's a great thing to see and hopefully we'll continue to see these warm welcomes as we go to the other islands because those crowds did last all the way through to our departure. There was tons of extra security to help control those crowds. And at 10 p.m., we did finally depart. The Norwegian Gem departed before us. And then when it was our time to depart, the captain gave a very long blast of the horn. Several blasts, including one that I have to say was probably the longest horn blast I have ever heard of from a ship before. just gave them a treat as we set sail and all the way out to the ocean. We really could not see the people too well anymore. But especially in that grassy area leading up to the fort, you can just see all those white flashes. So even if we couldn't see them, we could tell there were tons of people still out there watching us leave. And for our weather today, we had a sunrise at 6.50 a.m. and sunset at 5.47 p.m. We had a high of 81, so it was nice and warm out to see those people during the arrival. But unfortunately, it was 
cloudy skies pretty much the entire day and we did have a few showers including one right as we pulled into the pier for the first time but it did not affect those viewing when we were pulling in the rain was falling and you could see everybody along the coast just huddled under tents and umbrellas just to get a glimpse of the ship And on board the Quantum today, while in port, I did not do anything. I stayed on board the ship, took a few minutes to go off the shore just to see how those crowds were and get a glimpse of the Quantum myself from onshore. And you could see that they were going all out. I don't know if it's normal or if it was something special, but there was a red carpet laid down all the way along the pier for us. And I know there were many dignitaries from Puerto Rico in the area that did come on board. There was a special private event held up in the adult solarium that luckily included a buffet meal and stuff, along with several tours and other groups wandering around the ship. So it was definitely a big day for Puerto Rico as a whole to welcome the Quantum of the Seas, and that is what you want to see the first time a ship arrives into a port. You want everyone to care about it, to come out and see what everything is about and that's what we saw today so tomorrow is saint martin we'll see how things go there but as for our compass summary before we got to san juan we did have a very full morning afternoon really because it was a 4 p.m arrival it started with at noon the dare to challenge game show and that took place in the music hall i unfortunately did not attend so i'm not sure what it was about but it was a game show which I've been trying to mention a lot of those and it's actually one that I have never seen so I personally cannot even comment on what it might have been. But then at 12.30 and 1.30 over in the Royal Esplanada there were another set of DreamWorks performance, the same one, performed twice once again just like yesterday. And this time it was the Madagascar characters performing a little circus skit and this one was about 15 minutes, yesterday's was only 10 minutes. And once again, it used some of the cast on board the ship. It appeared to be the Mamma Mia cast this time, along with one of the leads from Mamma Mia as sort of the narrator hosting the whole event. Hey, what are you doing here? I'm the Rain Master. Oh, my ancestors played the original theme around. And at 1 p.m. today in the Royal Theater was the cake decorating demonstration. One of the more entertaining events that is often held on board cruises that are a little longer. It's usually not on the very short ones. It's one of those extra events they try to add to fill some time. But it is always one of the most entertaining. And in my opinion, it is a great way to sort of see what a cruise structure is like. It's we have the quest to compare one cruise director to another, but the cake decorating demonstration is a little more G-rated. It's more family appropriate, and it's another great measuring tool to compare one cruise director to another. And of course, Jimmy did great today, as you would expect. And this afternoon, there was also in the Esplanada, following those DreamWork events, as I was wondering through, it was not listed in the compass, but we did have the first pop-up named that tune. And that is the big game that they're rolling out with the Quantum of the Seas. It's supposed to be huge. I mentioned it a couple days ago, it's going to take place in the Royal Theater with the singers and dancers involved, with a full set, graphics, and apparently it's even going to be streamed out using the O3B network to all the other ships in the fleet. Well, a smaller component of that is the pop-up version. So they have a desk that has two buzzers, they plop it down somewhere and start the show, bring up two contestants and go through three rounds. The first round of course being name that tune exactly as the name states. Second round, they have to name the artist. And then the third round, somebody from the audience basically does a la la version of the song and they have to name what that song is. 
So three rounds and depending on the timing, they might bring up more contestants and continue or end the game. Get ready to name that shoe. I believe you know the answer. I believe you hit really hard, you might just get it. In five. Should we give it to her? Yes, it is indeed. All right. But it is entirely controlled by an iPad that one of the cruise director staff is using, so it is fully mobile. They can basically set up anywhere they want on the ship and without any notice. So you'll just be wandering around the ship and suddenly walk into a game of Name That Tune. So it's really interesting, and of course this is the first part of it. This is the part that's working. Later on, the real show, the full one, will show up. And of course this one will continue as a smaller subset of it. But it's just one of those brand new activities they are rolling out with the Quantum class that is going to hopefully set a new standard for the entire fleet. But going from that new standard and new show, 10.30 tonight after we departed San Juan was another one of the classics, the Love and Marriage Game Show, located right in the Royal Theater. We did not have it last week because Sonic Odyssey was using the theater for rehearsals all week. But it has made its return this week. Welcome to the stage, your host and cruise friends, the one and only, Jimmy Rhodes. Well, welcome everybody. Listen, give me a favor. Please give that applause to the one for Zach, right? To these bands for doing our auditions tonight. Zach, hey everybody, good to see you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, officially welcome to the Love and Marriage Game Show. Or I like to say by looking at our three couples up here on stage, it might be divorce court tonight. You never, never know. And it was a very traditional version of the game like we've seen in the past. Unlike the one on the grandeur that Jeffrey Arpin did this last time, it was the normal send one group off, have the other answer questions, bring the first group back, see if they match, do the same again with the opposite. So it was a very normal game there were, you know, the usual highlights, some hilarious moments, but nothing out of the ordinary. It was a very traditional game. As I said, they didn't try to skew it or play around with the rules at all, which is usually not a good thing. So in this case, traditional is a very good thing to see. And then that basically ended the compass for today. It was, as I mentioned, full when we're at sea. Then very empty for a period when we're on land, and then of course we ended it with another event. So it was a very interesting compass, sort of hybrid between sea day and port day. But moving on, our daily dine for today, we're gonna continue with those casual port days with a stop at Michael's Genuine Pub. Michael's Genuine Pub, another brand new venue on board the Quantum of the Seas, is the replacement for the traditional pubs found on the promenades of the previous classes of ships. It offers a variety of craft beers as well as pub style food all at a premium price and is available a la carte. Located directly off of the Esplanada, right on the corner between the Rendezvous and the shopping district, it is the perfect location to stop your passing through or waiting to meet somebody. And of course, Michael's Genuine Pub is a bar, one of the many on board the ship, but it also serves food, which is why it is considered a dining venue. But there are many other bars throughout the ship, and today's venue tours, we're gonna take a look at a couple of them, including the Schooner Bar, which is a Royal Caribbean tradition. Quantum of the Seas is rethinking the way bars are managed on board the ship. Instead of a bar attendant that rotates through each of the bars during a sailing, each bar has its own individual bartender that remains there the entire time. It also has a separate list of items that each bar has so that if you want a certain item, you must go to that specific bar and not just any bar. This is designed, like Dynamic Dining, to enhance the theming and styles of each bar to have its own unique 
experience unlike any other bar on the ship. The first bar we're going to look at is the Schooner Bar, which is located on Deck 5 of the Royal Esplanada at the very forward end by the Royal Theater and the elevator lobby. Like all the previous Schooner Bars, it has the typical schooner nautical theming along with the added scents to really make you feel like you're on a schooner. They have, however, toned back on some of the schooner theming and gone a little more modern with it. It has a little more focus on the construction of the quantum of the seas and the quantum itself rather than a schooner. That original feeling does still remain though along with the signature piano as it is the piano bar of the ship and acts as the piano bar every evening of the cruise. Along with piano activities at night, Schooner Bar also doubles as the daily trivia and other simplistic activity venue for the ship, mainly activities where you do not have to get up but can remain in your seats. Our second bar is then Boleros, Royal Caribbean's Latin-infused lounge that has made its way onto all the recent builds as well as many of the older ships. And unlike some of the other lounges that are used for more Sitting and drinking, Boleros is a more active venue, featuring not only Latin-themed music each evening, resulting in tons of dancing and a very club-like atmosphere, but also home to many of the ship's activities that are felt to be too small for the music hall. So it is very much an overflow activity venue from music hall and considered to be much more than just a bar. Our third bar today is going to be Vintages, the signature wine bar on board the Quantum of the Seas as well as every ship in the Royal Caribbean fleet. And there is no champagne bar on board Quantum, which means that this is pretty much the only location to go for the wide variety of wines and champagnes you've expected in the past. Like was introduced on many of the newer ships, such as the Oasis class, there is a selection of self-service wines that you can just go up to at any time and get yourself a glass of wine, regardless of if the bar is actually open or not. Or you can go spend some time at the bar and relax with the bartender for the evening. Vintages is definitely one of the, if not the, quietest bar on board the ship, so if you're looking for somewhere to just relax and not really the party atmosphere, this would be the place to go. Our fourth bar is a new addition to the Quantum of the Seas, and a first at sea in general, and it is the Bionic Bar. Located on the Royal Esplanada, directly across from Wonderland, it features two Maker Shaker bots that create drinks for you. You simply go up to one of the iPads that's located around the venue. There's usually several out on tables, and they are mobile, so if you don't see one, there's normally an attendant in charge of the bar that can get one for you. And you touch your WoW band or your CPass to log in as yourself. It verifies that you are over 21 years of age, so that you can purchase a drink. And then you go through and select your type of drink, if you need it shaken, whatever you want, either one of their stock ones or you can create a custom one from scratch. And when you place your order, it then shows up on one of the two screens on either side of the robots themselves and it'll be located in the queue until it's time for the bots to make it. And once that occurs, it then moves up to the main part of the screen where you can then see each individual step of the process broken down as the robot goes through and completes them. Once your drink is completed, it'll then be placed on the conveyor belt and you simply walk up to the robot area and place your CPASS card or your WoW band once again on the appropriate conveyor belt and that'll release it so that it slides down the table so you can pick it up and have a drink. So those are the four main bars on board the Quantum of the Seas and of course they're also the smaller ones but these are the signature bars. So from traditional bar to the bionic bar, the Quantum of the Seas has tons of bars to cover everyone's tastes. And 
Anytime you're walking around the ship, you're sure to wander into one of them with something going on. So there are a lot of different places to just stop and grab a drink if you're looking for something. And today, we're going to take a look at the person responsible for all of those bars and ensuring they are operational, the food and beverage manager on board the Quantum of the Seas, Catalin Buda. So today I'm speaking with Catalin, the food and beverage director on board the Quantum of the Seas. Thank you for joining me. Nice to meet you. Nice pleasure to be here. Thank you. And before we even get into anything specific, we always hear about the food and beverage director, but I don't think many people actually know what you do on board, so could you explain a little bit about what your responsibilities are? Yes, I, uh, I'm responsible for all the food and beverage outlets. Um, I run a team of five, uh, 736 members, uh, that's including uh, the executive chef, main, main key players are the executive chef, beverage manager, senior restaurant operations manager, and it includes all aspects from the bars, uh, culinary, all galleys, pantries, and food, front of house, food service areas, all restaurants. In total on board the Quantum, um, 18 different food outlets, 26 different bars, um, and to this you can attach every other prep area, galleys, and so on and so forth for back of the house. Quite a huge operation, uh, very dynamic, very active, uh, as all of this has to be run in coordination with shows and every other activities to make sure that all the guests uh, receive nothing but the best. Yeah. So then you're in charge of the most important aspect of the ship. We can sit in a port, but we can't sit without food. So what made you take on such a vital role for the ship? Um, this uh, I've been doing this since I was uh, 17. It's been one of my passions. I kind of like got drawn into it and I started to love it even more actually. I'm addicted to it right now. I, I, like, uh, I like catering. I like F&B. Um, the most important thing what I think I love doing this is because I like to see people having fun. Um, the other part of it is uh, simply uh, the logistics, the challenges that, uh, that provides it to me, the ports, the dynamics. Uh, and especially on a cruise ship, uh, changing ports, changing itineraries, arrival times is definitely far more uh, more complex than any land-based operation. Yeah. So basically I love the challenge and it's been great so far. I've been doing this for the last uh, 14 years. I've opened Oasis Allure mm -hmm. and uh, from that onwards, uh, simply I'm in. So then you joined Royal Caribbean back in 2000. I joined Royal Caribbean in 2000. At the time, the Voyager was just coming out. And that was really the start of the whole specialty venue craze. And since then, there have been many changes over the years. What has that done to affect your job over time? Uh, specialty restaurants uh, have been uh, definitely uh, one of the key components to our, to our cruising industry. Uh, the specialty restaurants itself was a demand from guests. We, we do have a certain clientele on board that, that wants more. They want to be pampered more. They want to not that the quality what we have on board is is any way inferior, but there's certain guests that really desire more. They have really special occasions. They are willing to 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 elevate uh, their experience, and they want to pay the price for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have started partnerships with uh, with celebrity chefs and so on and so forth that you already know on board, and the guests are craving for that. The the, the market has changed, and the market demands it. And that's what we did in Royal Caribbean. We provided that. And it started, as you said, with a small ship, Voyager, and then we moved on to all the other ships. And now it's become a huge thing. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, maybe half of the ship is specialty, half of the ship is complementary. And that's what the market is asking. And that's one thing about Royal Caribbean is that uh, when, we <coughs> when we come up with these, uh, with these concepts, it's based on guest feedback and guest demand. We, 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 we ask for their opinions, we ask for what they want, and we try to adapt our product all the time to the to the guest needs. Mm -hmm. And if the guest asks for it, that's what we're gonna do. Specialty restaurant is not necessarily a revenue component when it comes from the food side and the cover charge for us. Specialty restaurant actually is an additional experience added to the guests. And that's how it's always been perceived by us. Yeah. And then with the quantum they have taken probably the biggest jump forward with the introduction of dynamic dining. How has this created a new challenge for the way that you have to handle planning out all of your supplies for a sailing? Yeah. Dynamic dining, it is, it is the huge leap. It's the next, uh, uh, the next uh, level of cruising. Uh, it gives the guests the, the option to take ownership of their cruise. Mm -hmm. 
uh, take ownership of it through the Royal IQ, the, the apps, and, and planning the cruise forward to, to cater to their own needs. So cater to your own cruise. Don't, we, we shouldn't, while other cruise lines and ourselves on other ships, we just tell the guests what time to eat. We want them to tell us what time to eat, and we want to cater to that. So mm-hmm. instead of going the other way around, we're going from the guest to us, instead of us going to the guest. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's a new uh, it's a new era of dining. It's a new era of uh, of culinary experiences, and that's what we have done here. Uh, challenges, absolutely yes. Uh, definitely, we need to make sure that uh, that we stick to what we promise, and that is the aim right now to ensure that we 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 give the guests what we do. We're on the right track, and I think right now this is this is almost complete, and the feedback so far has been great, uh, and we are we're focused to polish it to 100 percent right now. And then Adam Goldstein has repeatedly said that there would be alternative menus available. I know I've asked about them on board, and I've been told you can order from the venue across from the venue you're in. Is there any more information on the alternative menus or any other tweaks that are going to be going we on? We have tweaks happening at the moment based, again, on feedback mm-hmm. experience, uh, feedback from the guests. Uh, we are tweaking a few menus. Uh, like, for example, we are going to tweak American Icon uh, menu. That's one of the tweaks that's happening as we speak. We're already sourcing for some additional products, and this is again coming from guest feedback. Uh, we are the alternatives menus are in full swing right now, as we speak about it. Uh, Altern we we still do not want to change food from venue to another venue, mm-hmm. and even though the guests you know still tell us yes, but we should sit in American Icon and have food from Chic. Uh, we don't do that. The reason for it is just that we protect the concept. We like to for somebody to go. And experience the concept the concept itself. And every concept that we have on board right now for the dynamic dining, and I always say protect the concept, is it's all into one piece. From the music, to the lights, to the chairs, to the silver, to the glasses. So I don't think fried chicken would go in chic or right. any other thing. So the main the main goal behind this is anytime a guest asks us for that, we want to say thank you very much. May I make a reservation for you for tomorrow in American Icon? Uh, it's not that we wanna. It's not. It's definitely we, everything. It's it's a whole. It, it gets combined. So that's the reason why uh, maybe some guests want food from somewhere else. But definitely we will assist. We'll make a reservation and we'll we'll get you into the restaurant that you want. It's an eleven day cruise, and I'm sure we'll we'll get you in. Yeah. And then along those same lines, the rollout of dynamic dining to the Oasis class has introduced only three venues on board there, but they have stated there are two menus per venue. Is there going to be any kind of change like that on board the Quantum in the future for maybe the longer sailings? I think uh, uh, introducing it to Oasis was uh, uh, was also a thing with, with hardware because we went back. So definitely there's only three restaurants and we could not really change the interior structure of the ship. But um, there is the three menus over there. Uh, I don't think there will be changes soon. Uh, maybe something in the future, I don't know about that. but. Uh, uh, Quantum will still stay the same as it is with the four concept uh, like we have them right now because we, we were built and designed for that. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's how it's going to be for now. So you think they'd ever introduce a second rotation of menus on Quantum or remain with just the four menus? For now we'll remain with the four menus okay. and uh, let's see in the future what brings but definitely we're flexible and we always listen to our guests. Mm-hmm. So whatever will come up next we will we will definitely have to uh, to see what the guests desire and what they want, and then we'll move on from there. Okay. And then with so many different venues on board, how do you manage getting around to all those different locations each day? There's about seven of me. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I try my best. I trust my people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I trust my, my peers, my colleagues. I trust my managers. And uh, we have done an extensive training. Extensive training on, on how we want to operate, how, what is the standards, and everybody is very well focused on that. I do try my best to stay on the floor all the time to 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 assist to lead by example, but to trust the managers is the key word. Yeah. You have to trust your managers, otherwise you wouldn't be everywhere. Right. And then the Quantum of the Seas is headed to China next. With it will be a whole new set of venues and menu changes. How will this affect you going forward? From the FMB perspective, uh, we won't have many changes except that the bars will be lessened mm-hmm. uh, based on demand. But uh, for uh, for the for us, the biggest challenge is bringing, making sure that we have trained crew ready to step into the positions uh, of the crew that are leaving. Because we're gonna get a lot of Chinese crew on board. So what are we doing? We already uh, planning to send some crew members to school in China, where we're gonna start to prep them. Uh, we're preparing curriculums, trainings that they will receive prior to joining the ship. 
so that is the plan for now uh, to make sure that they are uh, it should be like a three day training uh, before joining the ship okay. so that's that's the plan menus there won't be any menu changes maybe little tweaks and additions like ciders side orders that would cater to the Chinese market but uh, uh, still as from our past experience the Chinese market is still ready to experience the product that we have mm -hmm. uh, and, and they want to do it but besides that we will add up a few side orders side dishes to the menus that really are popular but still the concept will be there which that's what they're ready for yeah with all your time in Bayonne, you've been collecting all sorts of data on the passengers and dining experiences. How is this going to be beneficial to the Anthem when she sets sail, but in the UK, but more importantly, when she then comes over to Bayonne in a few years? Or in a As a good practice all over the ships, what we do, we collect lessons learned, mm -hmm. and uh, lessons learned are, are key uh, for us to deliver our products. So we already started to collect data. Uh, uh, issues where we can improve uh, and opportunities for us and this is going to be actually Anthem is going to be a much easier thing to do mm -hmm. we we did go through a lot of learning curves to start up the ship <laughs> but uh, for sure we're going to take everything back with us uh, when we have collected a lot of data it's going to be easier for us mm -hmm. because we know what to expect and, and, and uh, we've done it now we already I would say we're 99% there mm -hmm. And then before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to tell the viewers? Uh, no, nice to meet you. Experience Quantum. Uh, it's the next level of cruising. Uh, experience the IT part. Experience the, the culinary uh, excitement. Celebrity uh, chefs. Experience uh, the dynamic dining, definitely. And take charge of your cruise. Come and enjoy. And uh, see you around. If you come on board, come say hello. Okay. Thank you for nice the Nice to meet time. you. And uh, see you soon. See you around, right. yeah? So that does it for this edition of the Cruise View. Tomorrow, of course, we are in St. Martin and we'll be there with, I believe, the Adventure of the Seas, another Royal Caribbean ship. So you'll get that comparison of Voyager class, the big ship, the latest ship, the greatest ship from 1999, along with the Quantum class, the latest, greatest from 2014. So a nice little contrast there between the two classes and designs. But of course, that does it for today, so once again, I am Derek Cohn, and stay tuned for the links. There are plenty of ones for today's activities.